Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. This is the 10th video in the KQL Intermediate Series. In the last session, we continued with part two of joins. In this session, we'll continue joins in part three and understand the different types of joins and when to use them. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In part one of the join series, we focused on the basic mechanics of joins. In part two, we started to write more than one line for each join. And we learned about the difference between an inner and inner unique join. In part three, we'll discuss the many types of joins in KQL and how to select the right one. Later in part four, we'll tie everything together with examples and use cases, as well as optimization strategies. In KQL, there are four primary types of joins, inner, outer, semi, and anti-joins. In the last lesson, we learned about the inner join. The best way to visualize joins is to use a Venn diagram. We learned there's a left and right table. The left table is placed first, and the right table is placed second in the query. If you only want to see records that have key matches on both the left and right tables, you can use an inner join. The primary difference between an inner and inner unique join is that the inner unique deduplicates the key on the left table and then joins to any matches on the right. The inner join has one row for every combination on the left and right. Remember in KQL, if you just type in join, without defining the type of join, the default is inner unique. For those that are used to working with a SQL language, this may be confusing because the default join type in SQL is inner. While inner joins only show records with key matches from both tables, outer joins show key matches and include records that are not matches. There are three types of outer joins, a left outer, right outer, and full outer. A left outer will show you all of the inner matches, plus add records from the left table that are not a match. A right outer will show all inner matches, plus add records from the right table that are not a match. And a full outer will show all records with matches and records from both tables without a match. A semi-join first calculates key matches in the same way as an inner join, but it then discards values from one of the tables that you choose. A left semi-join starts with all of the inner key matches from both tables, but it only shows the matching key values from the left table. A right semi-join starts with all of the inner key matches from both tables, but it only shows the matching key values from the right table. This is handy if you don't have a need for joining two data sets and you only want to work with one table, but you want to identify the matches from the second table. Lastly, we have an anti-join. Anti-joins are similar to a semi-join in that they only produce records from one table. But instead of showing records with key matches, the anti-join only shows records that don't match. In a right anti-join, First, all key values are matched, and whatever is remaining from the right table that's not a match is displayed as the output, with the opposite for the left anti-join. The anti-join is great for identifying all of the outliers that don't have a key match. It may be hard to understand use cases for each join type, so let's test out a few data sets and see what the outputs are. Let's go back to our Contoso data sets. We have one table for customers, one table for sales, and one for products that we can work with. In this example, we know that the products table has one record for each product, and those products are referenced by the product key. The Contoso Operations Officer wants to know if we have any sales on the sales table that don't directly map to a product so we can understand if there's any products missing from the database. In this use case, we're trying to understand any items that don't have a key match. 
when we look at the options in the high-level categories, the anti-join is designed to find the records without a key match. Let's put the product table on the left because it's smaller, since it only has unique records of each product. We'll put the sales table on the right since it's larger. If we want to find any sales that don't align to a product, we can use a right anti-join. When we run this query, we see that there's no records, which mean there are no sales that don't have a defined product key found on the product table. Let's try another use case. We want to see all the sales information from people in the state of Washington, but we only need the sales information and we don't need to see any of the other associated customer information. If we want to match keys, but only see records from one table after the match, we can use a semi-join. In this case, we put the customer table on the left, write a query that shows only customers from the state of Washington, then make a right semi-join with a sales fact table. This effectively takes away all the customer data from the customer table and only shows sales results. While we could simply interjoin the two and project the columns of interest, this type of join is more efficient. In the next example, we have the storm events table that shows storm events both in the U.S and in the waters outside of the US. We also have the population data table. This shows the population of each state in the US. We want to join the two data sets using the state as the key. But we also want to see storm data from countries outside of the US without a state identified. We can use an outer join. Since the population data table is small in size, let's put that on the left. We'll put the storm events table on the right. Let's do a right outer join. When we look at the key on both tables, we see the key is state with a capital S in both cases. We can simply write in state after our join type. When we look at the output, we see the population is now included next to the state. And when we scroll down, we see some records without a state. And in those cases, there is no population, but the records are still included because of our outer join type. If we used an inner join instead, these would not be present. Again, a refresher on inner joins. They display records with key matches. An inner unique join deduplicates the key on the left table first before pairing with matches on the right table. If in doubt on which type of join to use, go back to the four major categories, decide what category makes sense, then determine the precise join type within that category, and be sure to place the smaller of the two data sets on the left. That's it for part three on joins. In the final part four, we'll tie everything together, provide more examples, and work on optimization. For homework, Use the ADX demo environment. If you need instructions on how to access this environment, reference session two of the KQL Beginner series. Using the population data table and storm events table, write a query that shows storm events from states with under 5 million population only, but leave out the population data because it's not needed. The output should only show records from the storm events table to meet that criteria. Place your query in the comment section to learn with and help others. That's it for part three. We'll see you in part four. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you wanna receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.